This past June, I visited my fourth Six Flags park, one of my more anticipated ones. Six Flags New England is located in Agawam, Massachusetts, and we decided to hit it on our New York City trip since it was close by. Also, El Toro and King Dakao were both closed, so we didn't want to waste a trip to Great Adventure. We heard that this park might even be better than our favorite Six Flags park over Georgia. We left a little disappointed, but it was still a great visit. Is this park worth the trip? Here's my full review of Six Flags New England. Let's start with some background and the entry process. Driving up to the park is weird. It's located literally a quarter of a mile inside the Massachusetts state line, right near Connecticut. It's located about 45 minutes north of Hartford and 30 minutes south of Springfield. It's a rural town, so entry and exit are a little weird on the narrow street. Because of the wooded setting, the parking lot is super far from the park. It's not as bad as a walk as everyone says, but I would take the tram if you're in a hurry. We got there pretty early and the bridge over the road was fantastic. It makes for a great first impression to be able to see the entire park in front of you, as well as most of the town. Superman stands tall in the distance, and it's pretty intimidating. The entrance is also very well presented. I preferred it to over George's entrance, which had a weird setup. This one was much more open, and they actually let us in 30 minutes early to set up for rope drop. Now let's talk about the rides in the park. First, the coasters. This park has a decent coaster collection. However, most of the coasters are clones. In fact, there are only four unique coasters in the park besides the Kitty Coaster. On the left side of the park is Thunderbolt, an old wooden coaster from the 40s. This ride was decent and had a couple of surprise pops of ejector airtime. The layout was pretty simple, and there were definitely some rough spots, but it's worth a ride at least once. Flashback is just a typical boomerang and not a good one. This one, for whatever reason, felt much bumpier than some of the others, and with the harder restraints, it wasn't a good experience. Pandemonium, another clone, was a great experience though. There were only two of us in the car, so maybe that had something to do with it, but we spun like crazy. The ride was smooth, had an ejector pop, and we spun for 20 plus seconds on the brake run of the coaster. That was a massive surprise. Another surprise was Wicked Cyclone. I already have a full review out on that ride, but it's my number 5 coaster right now. It has some wild hang time, some super violent outer bank turns, and a ton of ejector airtime moments. Moving to the other side of the park is Joker. We actually missed this credit because of a random breakdown, but more on that later in the video. All you need to know is that there was no sign or even employees at the ride, which was disappointing. That's just a typical free spin. Riddler Revenge was an SLC that had the new restraints. While they helped eliminate headbanging, the ride was still very bumpy and had violent jolts on each of the inversions. Batman the Dark Knight was also a pleasant surprise. This unique floorless was actually quite forceful, especially through the whippy corkscrews and tight loop. But that 0G roll was amazing. It felt like an RMC 0G roll, but on a BNM floorless. It was definitely the best part of the ride. Moving on is the Wild Mouse, Gotham City Gauntlet. This is a typical Wild Mouse and another ride we missed. It broke down while we were in the station, and we decided to skip it so we could ride Riddler Revenge and Batman. Finally, the other big coaster in the park, Superman the Ride. This was a bucket list coaster, and it looks fantastic. The layout is one of the best in the world. A ton of floater hills lead into a super powerful ejector hill. That leads into the Twister finale with a few rapid transitions, a super cold tunnel, and a couple of airtime pops. However, the airtime felt super awkward because of the restraints. Instead of launching up and out of your seat, you sort of lurch forward. It's kind of uncomfortable. Not enough to ruin the ride, but enough to take away from the airtime. The airtime was still powerful enough, and you could feel it, but the restraints definitely took away from the ride experience. Aside from that, the park has a small kiddie coaster called the Great Chase and is imperatively known as Catwoman's Whip. As for the other rides in the park, Six Flags New England has a variety of flats. Most notable is Scream, a super large SNS drop tower. There's also an indoor spinning ride called Cyborg, and a spinning ride called Supergirl, which is really nice looking. There's also a super large Zamperla Discovery called Harley Quinn Spin Sanity. Other than that, there are some small family rides around the park, and what used to be the world's tallest swing ride with New England Skyscreamer. There is also a very nice looking river raft ride called Blizzard River. It's important to note that we did not venture into Hurricane Harbor, but it looked like a very nice water park from the outside. It's weird because there is no entrance directly to Hurricane Harbor, so we have to walk all the way through the dry park to find the entrance, which is underneath Batman. Now let's talk about some pros and cons of the park. I want to start off by saying this park is very well presented. The entrance area looks great, and it's very colorful. It's situated on a hill, so you can overlook Superman in the distance. I also appreciate the amount of water features around the park. Six Flags New England also presents all of their coasters very well. They look newly painted, with the exception of Flashback, and have nice areas around them. 
Superman's area especially is fantastic. The ride looks incredible, especially in the twister section where the train dives over and under the paths. It makes for a great first impression of the ride. However, with a smaller layout in a lot of different areas, that makes the theming of the areas lackluster. There apparently was a section themed the 50s called Rockville, but because of how small it was, it just felt like a transition from the entrance area to Gotham City. The same goes for Crack Axle Canyon, which half of the area was actually closed. Also, just how the park was run was very strange. The bigger coasters like Wicked Cyclone and Superman had great operations. However, the other rides in the park, especially Riddler Revenge, which had over 7 minute dispatches at some points, was horrible to wait through. In addition, Riddler, Thunderbolt, and Batman all were running one train. And we actually opted for the Flash Pass due to the shorter operating hours and a chance of rain later in the day. However, only a few of the coasters were using the Flash Pass that day, just because no one was operating the entrances. Joker, Gotham City Gauntlet, Red the Revenge, and Batman all had their Flash Pass lines closed. And there were a couple of breakdowns. Gotham City Gauntlet was fine because that was just a wild mouse. But we've still never ridden a free spin because of the unexpected closure. The ride closed without warning, and there wasn't an operator or sign telling us why the ride was closed. That may be normal at this park, but I thought it was disappointing. Lots of flats were also closed. Many of the rides in Crack Axle Canyon were closed or completely blocked off. And there was a section of the park by Rockville that looked like it hadn't been looked at in years, over by Contiki. Other than the operational issues, the park looked to have decent food. We didn't eat a meal at the park, but we had some New England-style fries over by Flashback. Those were actually very good, and I've heard the park has a fantastic barbecue restaurant. As for the rides, I thought the collection had something for everyone. There are a couple of family coasters, but the thing they're really lacking is a launch coaster. A super boomerang like what Great Adventure is getting would be great here. After the three main coasters though, there is a significant drop off. After Batman, my fourth favorite coaster in the park was Pandemonium. If this was my home park, I would probably just marathon the three big coasters, which funnily enough are located at the three ends of the park, so there are long walks in between them. So what are my overall thoughts on the park? Is it worth visiting? I'd say it is absolutely worth a visit if you're in the area. The top two is incredible, and the other coasters in the park are decent outside of the two Vacomas. The park is well presented in most areas, and you are definitely capable of having a good time here. While some operational issues made our day worse, we enjoyed the lineup of rides, the overall atmosphere of the park, and how the park was presented. Compared to Six Flags Over Georgia, this park has very good coaster merchandise. I would recommend visiting, but definitely be aware of the possible operational issues the park has, so you aren't disappointed like we were. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment what you think of Six Flags New England, and have a great rest of your day.